Hey howdy hey y'all welcome back to the channel. This past week has brought us gaming's new and shiny toy called The Finals, a free to play game show esque arcade FPS game currently in a closed play test as of recording this video. The Finals is being developed and published by Embark Studios and on their team of developers are former Battlefield devs. Speaking of which, this game gives me major Battlefield meets Mirror's Edge vibes, so does that mean that this game should be the industry's new template to go off of? Well, not quite. This is the good, the bad, and my thoughts on the finals. But before we get into it, I have a small favor to ask. We just hit 1400 subs on the channel, which means we are 600 away from our goal of 2K subs. And by the end of the video, if you like what you've seen, then consider liking and subbing to the channel. I appreciate you all so much. Socials are linked below. Let's get into it. According to their Steam page, the finals is the world famous free to play combat centered game show. Fight alongside your teammates in virtual arenas that you can alter, exploit, and even destroy. Build your own playstyle in this first person shooter to win escalating tournaments and lasting fame. Currently, the game has two maps, those being Soul and Monaco, and three different classes to choose from, those being light, medium, and heavy. Your light classes are certified bitch boys who will die if you sneeze on them, but they have the ability to use assassinations and speed to their advantage. The medium class utilizes more throwables and an AK-47 variant of weapon, and the heavy class utilizes an M60 straight out of Vietnam with an RPG and a deployable shield. You can also utilize certain class perks like a healing gun, thermal vision, etc. Those two maps that I mentioned earlier, Seoul and Monaco, yeah, they are super vertical and a crackhead's playground, but they look absolutely beautiful and flow pretty damn well. The objective of each game is four teams of three compete to get as much money as they possibly can in a single game. You can do that by stealing cash vaults and taking them to cash out stations where you have to protect the cash out system until it's done processing, and if you die, someone can steal your money and claim it as their own. Every time two volts get cashed in, more will spawn in, and while that's going on, sometimes random events like meteor showers or mini games like deathmatch will pop up. So now that all of that is out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into what I believe is great about the finals. First things first, the game looks absolutely beautiful. It's genuinely obvious that former Battlefield devs worked on this game because it aesthetically looks like a Battlefield game. The guns and recoil pattern patterns on the weapons take me back to Battlefield 3 a little bit, and overall the guns look and sound great. Another detail that many of my good friends have pointed out is that the destruction mechanics are some of the best we have on the market right now, and very nostalgic of Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4's destruction. If you notice that a vault is a floor or two above you and your team doesn't feel like taking the stairs, take a C4 or an RPG and bring it down to you. You see an enemy team trying to use a bridge and you don't want them to? Easy, just use your previously mentioned object deletion tools and remove the bridge entirely. I also have to comment on the auto replenishment of your basic throwables along with infinite ammo. I know it's kind of a duh obvious moment, but for a game like this, infinite ammo is slightly better than winning the lottery. The amount of ammo and throwables you're gonna be blowing through in a single match is monumental, and if this game had lootable ammo, it would be incredibly boring and tedious as all hell to play. I also need to comment on the player models. The most basic models for male and female characters characters look decent, but the skins they have in the game look so sick. If you play the close play test, they give you some in-game currency to buy whatever you want. I use the Urban Operator skin right now, and it's quite possibly the best skin in the game. Not to say that the others are ass or anything, it just looks really, really clean. The amount of detail that goes into some of these skins is impressive, and it shows that these guys are committed to their craft. Aesthetics for a game like this is paramount, and I gotta say, they did a damn good job playing into the game show gimmick they aspire to create. Before you queue up, you get to meet your enemy teams in a panning shot where the player models are doing an emote of some kind, and before you drop foot into the arena, you run through a tunnel that says the finals on the wall, everything is illuminated in red, before breaking through a grid wall and starting the game absolute fire. Before we move into what I absolutely hate about this game, I want to discuss one more key component of this game and it's the movement. Remember how I said earlier that the finals looks like Battlefield and Mirror's Edge combined? Well, it plays like it too. Using zip lines, jumping from tall buildings, jumping from platforms, jumping over holes, 90% of your time playing this game is going to be in the air or on a zip line, unless you're actively defending the cash out site. The movement feels a bit slippery and off-putting, but once you give it some time to register, 
roster, it actually doesn't feel half bad at all. I can think of at least three BR titles right now that have movement that's worse than this, which is saying a whole lot. The movement mechanic in this game is high intensity, fast paced, arcadey, a bit slippery like I said earlier, but overall surprisingly polished. Now, let's move on to what I cannot stand about this game. I wanted to save this one for last, but since it's the first thing you're going to encounter, why not mention it first? The TTK is higher than the average blood pressure levels in America. If you plan on killing someone, get ready to hold that mouse button until the fucking gun auto reloads and maybe your opponent will die. Why the TTK is high as hell like that, I have no idea and it does not make any sense to me whatsoever. Someone somewhere will be like, well, it's always been like that in arcadey shooters so it doesn't matter. And to that I say it 100% does matter. The difference in being able to kill someone with one bullet, 10 bullets, or an entire clip will influence how you not only play the game, but how you feel about the game. If the game had the same gameplay loop but was a one hit kill, the servers wouldn't be occupied at all right now. Just prove me wrong. Yeah, the high TTK and attention you need to put on making sure your shots hit is cool and fun and whatever, but if you're getting shot at by two or more people, you won't be able to down an enemy and focus your attention on the other, because you're still gonna have your left mouse button pressed in while they shoot the shit out of you. If the TTK was faster by 20%, I think we can have a better discussion about it, but until that happens, it's horrific. Another complaint I have is something I've seen quite a bit, and that is shots failing to register within the enemy's hitbox. Now, this could be an issue caused by server desync, which I can totally understand, but it's still annoying as hell nonetheless. There isn't a pattern that I know of with it either, so it's completely random, which means that if you shoot someone, there is a chance that your shots may all of a sudden stop registering. An issue I've had personally in the game is when I got to modify my key bindings to my mouse buttons, the game just refused to map them completely. I don't know if it's just the type of mouse that I have, I don't see why that would be an issue to begin with, but overall a small thing that should get fixed. This next complaint stems from the TTK argument but isn't related to TTK at all if that makes any sense. This has everything to do with the ADS zoom and weapon bloom being absolutely horrible. Battlefield 2042 has a special little setting in their game that you can enable which allows you to essentially ADS without suffering a massive loss in your FOV angle. In this game, it cuts your FOV damn near in half. I want to be able to see more than the standard FOV when it comes to aiming so I can snap to the enemies better and land more precise shots. That also plays into the weapon bloom being at a higher value than the recoil of the weapons themselves. Weapon bloom, for those of you who do not know, is a condensed version of how accurate will my gun fire when ADSing, and in the finals, it's pretty much the last thing you want to do. I suggest getting up close and personal while hip firing on some OG Halo PvP type shit. I will say though, for all purposes, just use the heavy class. You might be slow as hell, but the weapon bloom on the M60 is heaven compared to the AK and micro Uzi. Moving on from the weapon issues I have, I have some reservations about the spawn times when you die in this game. When you die, you get hit with a 30 second spawn time, which is already brutal enough. But if your whole team dies, it resets that 30 second timer. What in the absolute hell were they thinking when they made that a thing? So that means you could potentially wait up to 60 seconds before you can spawn back in, and in a game where time is literally costing you money, that is the last thing you want to experience. What a dumbass mechanic to have. Some people will argue that it adds intensity and suspense into the game, but I say to hell with that shit. If the game is already high intensity and fast paced, why would you purposefully add a 30 second timer that at any time can reset? set back to 30 seconds. What the hell is wrong with 10 or 15 second spawn times? Let's go ahead and roll into my final thoughts on the finals. This title is surprisingly good. Genuinely, I'm shocked that it's as good as it is. My first 30 minutes in, I was gearing up to write a horrific review just talking the most out of pocket shit possible about this game, but I decided to sink more time into it. During this time, I paid more attention to the finer details of the game and just decided to have fun. And in a game like this, you're gonna want to have as much fun as possible, even if it's a little bit forced at first because I'm gonna tell you guys once you set the bullshit aside the game is actually quite good is it perfect absolutely not is there more work that needs to be done a thousand percent yes this game is one of the most clear-cut no blur no skewed lines black and white mixture of genius and dog shit something is either really good potentially great or something is really bad and broken I will however die on a damn hill saying that the TTK is one of the worst things I have experienced since Halo Infinite and to be honest I think Halo's TTK is quicker than this titles is the finals worth checking out absolutely yes you can either request access through Steam or you can 
download the Steel Series app on your desktop, make an account, verify your account, then boom, you have access. I'm gonna potentially make a video on the finals again at the end of the play test, so if you wanna see that video and many more like it, then consider smashing that like button, that sub button, and cash drop that notification bell. I post content like this all the time right here on YouTube. And as always, my name is Redbeard Mortis. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you guys in the next one, but until then, I am fucking out of here.